If you have a manual transmission car, but you suffer from poor clutch engagement or inconsistent pedal response, then you're in the right place because we're gonna fix these exact issues in today's video. And the best part, we're gonna do it for free. Let's get into the video. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. So you have a manual transmission car and you wanna get the most performance out of it. Maybe you've already done a short shift kit, the ultimate clutch pedal, or you've upgraded the clutch and flywheel, but you still want a little bit performance. Perhaps you're just starting out and you wanna use the most cost-effective method. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do here today. And hopefully it's gonna help us address three issues. Our transitions from first to second, as well as downshifting in general. And then the last one is going to be downshifting under higher acceleration, specifically, at least in this car, second and fourth gear. And for frame of reference, if you're looking at this, this is my leg all the way down on the clutch. So I'm free to go through all the gears right now. And then this is my leg fully up, but still on the pedal itself. And we're starting to move now. So that right there is generally entering in the friction zone for this clutch. And here we're taking off. So right there, that transition from first to second, maybe you saw the camera jerk a little bit. In comparison to that second to third, it was really smooth. So first to second, you really feel the resistance that you have to push through in the clutch and the gas balancing act. And second to third transition, not so much. So you really feel as if you kind of have to hold the clutch in that friction zone as you let on the gas in order to push through that bit of resistance. But because we already have a decent amount of momentum going when we're in second when, and then we transition to third, we really don't feel it as much. So there's not as much of a balancing act and much resistance when we're going from second to third. Under acceleration, but I'm also going to include under incline and decline, uh, I've had issues where the clutch won't fully engage and can spit back out the shifter. So if I'm approaching a stoplight and all of a sudden it turns green from red and because I'm at relatively low speed, I'll put it into first, but it doesn't seem like it wants to grab. And then I either have to pull it back out, so depress the clutch, pull out the shifter, press it back in, and then re-engage. But then by then, the I guess the G-force of that move is already over because we've slowed down significantly. So I'm not sure if it's that a combination of the resistance with the clutch delay valve as well as our positioning with the G-force isn't allowing fluid to press in to the clutch and allow us to engage that first gear. But that same instance also happens under higher acceleration shifting. So if I'm getting on the freeway and I need to match someone's speed really quick because I'm in a lane that's about to end, I'll get like this grinding effect. It's the same thing that happens in that first gear scenario that I mentioned earlier. It doesn't wanna grab on, it seems like the clutch didn't open up to receive the new gear. Either I have to press back in the clutch, let out the shifter and then re-engage, or it just spits out the shifter entirely. And then I have to clutch in and then re-engage. And the last one in general is downshifting. So let me see if I can do it here. Approaching this red light is so, I purposely went into fourth and let's see, downshift a second. See, I had to hold it there for a split second longer than I really needed to. And you saw that bit of jerking there. It could be worse, and I try to exaggerate it there a little bit, but essentially what happens is when you're downshifting, not only are you going to a lower gear, but the resistance in the line seems to affect how fast we can let out the clutch. So not only is it that we're going to a different transition in speed for the clutch, but we're not getting enough pressure through the clutch line in order for us to allow the clutch to engage the new gear for whatever we're going in. I've had it happen here on this freeway before because this has that lane that I mentioned about earlier where 
sometimes I have to match the speed of traffic really quick because we do have a metering light here. So I'm coming almost from a full stop to freeway speeds and it really only happens in second and fourth. For some reason, third gear, fifth gear, perfectly fine. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show the exact scenario, but let's remove the delay valve and see what happens. Start by lifting up the car and supporting it with jack stands. Then remove the under panel and rear splash shield that has one pesky 10 millimeter plastic fastener. With all of that out of the way, on the driver's side of the transmission, you'll find the clutch line. With a 13 millimeter socket, remove the nut holding in the clutch line's bracket. Then pinch the line towards the end with locking pliers. But be sure to use a microfiber cloth so we don't damage the line. Once we disengage the retaining clip, we can separate the line from the slave cylinder with a little bit of pressure. Just have a paper towel or two available just in case some fluid comes out. Fortunately, the seal for the clutch line stayed attached. Place the line off to the side and grab your wood screw that should be 5 to 5.5 millimeters in diameter. Anything smaller won't work. Once you put it in, just turn it by hand and you should feel it grab onto something. What you should pull out along with some fluid is the retainer for the clutch delay valve. Don't worry about reinstalling this. Clean up any fluid that comes out and go back in. This time you should pull out the clutch delay valve. And once you do, congrats. Now clean up your clutch line and attach it back to the slave cylinder and unhook your pliers. You should also observe that there's no damage to the line. Then proceed to place back on the bracket, then secure it by the 13 millimeter nut. To bleed the line, remove the cover on the bleeder valve and attach your catch bottle. Don't worry about the fluid that's in here, this is just some leftover fluid that I had from a previous project. Moving over to the brake reservoir located underneath the driver's side cowl held in by three 10 millimeters and a push rivet, set up your power bleeder by connecting their lines. Adding some pre-twist to the adapter will help prevent the line from kinking when it's snug onto the reservoir. Now to add a small amount of brake fluid and pressurize the system to 15 PSI. Back underneath the car, open the valve with an 11 millimeter wrench and you should see some air bubbles come out with the fluid. The fluid drain should be so minimal that there's barely a pressure drop. On the other hand, if you're doing the pump method, open the reservoir and have a friend pump the clutch quickly to help it move along the line. After the bubbles have come out, instruct them to hold the pedal down as you close the bleed valve. Remember, not much fluid should come out as we didn't lose much in this process. With the valve closed, remove your catch, clean the area, and cap it off. And for those of you using the power bleeder method, make sure to release the pressure from your power bleeder cap, not the reservoir. And in both cases, top off as needed, but you probably don't even need to. Now it's finally time to close up the reservoir, place back on the splash shield along with the under panel and lower the car so we can take it for a spin. 
So we're back in the car and for frame of reference, this is all the way down on the clutch, all the way up, but foot is still on the pedal, down on the clutch, engaged, and we are in that friction zone right now. So let's see what a week's worth of this system has to show us. And the initial thought on the clutch valve delete is it's okay. Um, it's not anything that I would consider life changing, but it does smoothen things out. So that transition that we talked about earlier, the first to second and second to third, first to second feels a lot smoother, much closer to that second to third transition. And then all the other gears there on out have smoothened out, but the most noticeable difference is that transition from first to second. Even the downshifts are a lot smoother as well. When you're trying to match the RPMs when you're either upshifting or downshifting, you don't get as big of a jolt anymore. It's actually, or it seems like it's quicker to engage the gears. And when you're in that friction zone on the slow inclines or declines, say a driveway for instance, the friction zone feels more consistent. There were times where I thought I was in the friction zone, but the car would hesitate or shake a little bit when I'm going up a driveway, especially with a front lip. So if that's something that you struggled with, it seems like removing that clutch valve delete really helped. But I wouldn't necessarily say that if this wasn't your car and you jumped in it, you would know right away. If you're somebody who drives a lot of manual transmissions, like my dad has a truck, he also has his F30, and then the MP35i is mine. But if I were to go on vacation for like two weeks, come back and drive the car, I wouldn't say, oh my goodness, it's completely different. Or if it's a car that you don't drive all the time and then the next time you drove in it, the clutch valve delay was deleted, you might just think, oh, things have smoothened out on this particular ride because the issues that at least I experienced with the clutch valve delay were pretty inconsistent. It wasn't like something was always going on. Uh, it was just under those higher accelerations, sometimes on downshifts, as well as in those driveway scenarios, which it didn't always happen, but if something was to go wrong, it would be in those scenarios, and it would always be that the clutch wasn't fully engaged or it felt like the car was shaking again on those inclines, but it is an improvement, and considering that it's free, I'd say it's worth it. It's definitely something that doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort, especially if you already have the tools available in your garage. This is something that you could knock out, including lifting up the car and bringing it back down, bleed process, all that. Maybe half an hour to an hour. It doesn't take much time at all. So if you're expecting a huge improvement in terms of clutch pedal feel and clutch engagement, this isn't necessarily the mod that's gonna do it for you. But it is noticeable, especially since you're gonna be the one who's gonna be monitoring it. It does get rid of those finicky things that I mentioned earlier, especially in those slower speed incline or decline situations, as well as the faster speed, low gear situations in which we're trying to get on a freeway and trying to match freeway speeds really fast and the clutch didn't really engage the gear, I couldn't get that situation to happen again. But if you want a mod that will 100% improve your shifting experience, I cannot recommend a mod better than the short shift kit, which you can check out right over here. And I'll see you in that one.